Today is lift kit day, a new tire day. I'm very excited. Um, but before we drop the truck off to the buys, we have to have a conversation. Ever since I started posting photos of my truck since I got it in 2022, I have had countless comments and DMs from people saying that I need a lift kit, a leveling kit, new wheels, new tires, bigger tires. There are random people on the internet with opinions? You don't need everything right away. I've been using my truck to figure out what I wanna do, how much money I wanna spend, and what I actually need and what I'm actually gonna use, and what is actually gonna benefit me, um, and not just doing what the internet is telling me to do without doing my own research. We're gonna go drop the truck off over to the buys at Scruggs. I've had a really great experience with them so far. We had a consultation on what I am looking for. We got a lot of different options, and so today we're getting new tires and a lift kit put on the truck, and I'm stoked. Corey was such a legend for letting me hang out all day and film this entire process. It was really cool to see how everything was being installed and get a really good look into what's happening underneath the truck. I don't really know a lot about trucks, so it was really cool to get a little bit of an overview to help me understand my vehicle a little bit better and uh, he just went above and beyond to explain everything to me and let me kind of shoot and uh, deal with the camera in his face all day. I think my favorite part was seeing the old tires coming off the wheels and the new ones going on and then seeing how those get balanced. That was like a whole new unique experience that I had never really seen before. Oh, look at those aggressive tires. Wow. I'm excited. I had to leave the truck here uh, last week. After Corey put the lift kit on it and the new tires, they were rubbing uh, on the upper control arm. So we had to get spacers. They took like three or four days to get here. So it's a week later and now I'm picking up the truck and it looks real good. Yeah. I like it. Yay. <laughs> look, okay. I'm so excited. I can't even contain myself. I never thought I would be so excited about new tires in my life. Over the last eight months, I feel like we've been really using the truck as we intended to use it for both construction and overlanding as we've been down here at our land building out our campsite. One of the biggest um, issues that I've been having, especially down here because it's really muddy, was with my old tires. I was slipping, sliding, getting stuck in mud. And that's how I really knew that I needed better all-terrain tires for my truck. First of all, shout out to the guys at Scruggs because they were absolutely incredible through this entire process. As a woman, sometimes it can be really uncomfortable to go in and ask for help with something like this. And so to go in there and just feel like super accepted and respected felt really good. And they answered all my questions. He installed for us rare shocks, a front lift, upper control arms, Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT tires on my 20 inch rims. And not only did he let me film and shoot the entire process, but he showed me everything that he was doing. He explained everything to me. And like, as we get into doing more truck stuff, like I don't know a lot about trucks. I like camping and I like using my truck for adventure, but it was really helpful to understand like what's happening and just understand your vehicle better. But down here, there's a boggy mess. We would come down here and park and the entire tire would just be coated in leaves. I'm gonna pull down there, I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna back into the spots that usually cause me trouble and just see how these new tires perform. I got a lot of DMs from people saying that I should do this and I should do that and I should upgrade this. 
And at the end of the day, if you're making any upgrades, whether it's to your truck or it's to your camera bag, you need to figure out what you actually need and not be influenced by what other people are doing or what other people are telling you to do. No problem. There's a lot of things that we could have done with the truck. Like I could have got 17 inch wheels and I could have got 35 inch tires and I could have got a massive lift. Like, hey, 17 inch wheels don't really make sense for my use case. And cost wise, just didn't make sense. I had the wheels already. You had to really be realistic about things that when you're investing in something like a truck or your camera bag, be realistic about like what you're actually going to be doing, what you're actually going to be using said equipment for. For me, my truck is still a daily driver. It's gonna be on the highway probably 80% of the time. The rest of the time it's gonna be down here or we're gonna be camping with it, which is why I kept with the 20 inch wheels because I already had them. And then I just went with a larger tire that was a little bit wider and more aggressive because I knew I needed something for down here that I wasn't gonna get stuck in. And that was kind of a happy balance for me where they look really great, they're gonna perform really well, but it didn't incur a ton of other upgrades to the truck. We did the front lift to give the tire a little bit of extra space. We actually use the truck for truck stuff and so we have a lot of weight in the back. Um, we do a lot of towing, we put lumber back there, power tools, and then we camp back there as well. So I didn't wanna do anything to the back. It's a, a buy once, cry once scenario because it was expensive but I don't feel like it's overkill for what I'm doing and I also don't feel like I cut any corners with the things I added to the truck. I have come to learn over the last couple of years, even through the renovation, to buy once, cry once, <laughs> save up to buy the right thing. With that being said, I wasn't gonna wait to use the truck and I wasn't gonna wait to post photos of the truck because it's like a camera. Like if I had an APS-C camera and I was waiting for a full frame camera to go out and shoot photos or post photos, I would be waiting for a long time. Like use your equipment, learn it, figure out what you need, how you're gonna use it. And then when it comes time to upgrade something, you have a really good idea of what you want to do and where you should be investing your money and not just pouring money into something that the internet tells you to do. Ultimately, at the end of the day, potentially regretting it or spending way too much money on something you're just not gonna use. You also have the ability to appreciate the upgrades or the higher end equipment when you've used the crappier stuff. Most people online who create content online usually do it within a niche and the audience that they gather is because of that activity. So every time you look at popular content online that has certain equipment in it, whatever it be, whether it be trucks, cameras, helicopters, whatever, you're probably gonna end up seeing in all the popular videos that have views, you're probably gonna see top of the line gear. And it kind of reinforces or creates this sort of false bubble where everybody thinks that everybody should have the top of the line creme de la creme gear when the 99% of people don't have the budget for that and don't have that gear. They just got the basic entry level stuff. I think in this channel, it's kind of funny because we don't really limit ourselves to one niche of activities. We're kind of all over the place if, you, you know, if you've you been here for any period of time. You'll oftentimes see Becky and I get into hobbies or get into activities that require gear and we don't have the top of the line gear. Uh, a prime example would be when we went on our first helicopter trip, we, we had no experience camping. We went to Dick's Sporting Goods and bought a $50 Coleman tent, the cheapest one we could find. We got roasted for that. <laughs> I think the comment was, tent doesn't match the helicopter. Like this is the most ridiculous thing that this, these people are helicopter camping and they're using the cheapest tent that you, money can buy. Like, and so for people who are into camping, it probably stuck out like a sore thumb. For us, it didn't, but also it didn't matter. And did the tent do what it needed to do? Yeah, it, we, we spent three nights, three total nights out and the tent did great as a shelter. We were able to use it, it was fine. Now, did that tent's corners also rip, you know, like on the fourth time we used it? Yeah, it, it did. And you kind of get what you pay for, but we didn't want to go and buy, you know, a $900 tent, not knowing exactly what we needed. All we knew was we need a tent for a what if scenario and it's gonna be a cheap one. Becky somehow got super into camping and she's done her research and she realized, okay, these are the deficiencies that this Coleman tent has. Now this, we're gonna buy this REI tent. Buying a $50 tent is far different than buying uh, cheap tires or cheap struts, only to find out you have to rip them out and then install new ones, because that's it's not a $50 change. You know, you're talking thousands of dollars. It's all kind of like taking everything with a grain of salt, what people on the internet say, and just really, yourself, figuring out through your own experience and using equipment what you actually need. The, the law of diminishing returns applies to a lot of these things. You have a Coleman tent that's really affordable, that's not the best quality. You have an REI tent that's like a store brand tent that is still, you know, relatively expensive. 
but a great tent. And then you have, you know, higher end models that might be three or $400 more than that REI tent. Once you hit a certain threshold, the more expensive jump might only give you a really, really small amount of value. And you have to be honest with yourself too. Like what makes sense for what you're doing? Not what other people want you to do, not what the internet, you know, is going to like. Like what do you really need and what do you really want? And then what can you afford? If you can't afford that kind of buy once, cry once thing, but it's really the best move, then you really need to wait and save up so that you could afford that. If I had waited until I got new tires to use the truck, then I would have wasted the entirety of fall like camping. Like I wouldn't have gone camping, which would be really silly, right? Like you're supposed to use your gear. That's what it's there for. Trucks are meant to be driven. Tents are meant to be used. And so if I didn't go out because I didn't like my tires, that would have been real stupid. I'm stoked that these tires are working out well. We'll get it checked out at 500 miles and just make sure everything is looking good. But overall, I had a really great experience. This is not sponsored, but I do want to say shout out to Scruggs for helping me and just being like absolute legends. And it's just a whole different experience to talk to somebody face to face. It's almost camping season. <laughs> so snow on the ground. Is there? You know, we've always kind of talked about the things that we're into and we're really moving towards vehicle-based adventure. And like, I don't know how I got into trucks, but I have never been more excited about a hobby in my entire life. Like, I don't think I was even this excited about photography. This is how it happened. It went, you married somebody who is super into helicopters. I married somebody who's nuts. When we started doing long cross-country helicopter trips, we had to have wilderness skills. You didn't like the idea of being unprepared in the wilderness because you don't like the idea of being unprepared for anything. So you went down the rabbit hole of adventure videos on YouTube, which includes wilderness survival and camping. Camping then became truck camping, AKA overlanding. And then you realize, hey, I, I have, can do this. I have my own truck. I have a truck. I can make an overland rig. The rest my friends is history. <laughs> Thanks for watching our journey. I'm really stoked on the truck. I think it looks deadly. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, can you tell me something? Yeah, do I have a book or something hanging out? Yeah. No. yeah. Tell me what a tasteful poke is. <laughs> so we had to get spacers put in. So now the tires stick out from the truck a couple of inches. Corey said it's a nice tasteful poke and I would have to agree it is a tasteful poke. As opposed to a gauche poke? A gauche poke. I think it looks really good.